In this series of videos, we're going to talk about Firebase in Android applications. In this first video, we're simply going to look at an overview of what Firebase is. So what is Firebase? Firebase is a lot of things, but a lot of people think of it for its primary utility, which is a cloud-based database. This solves a problem that used to take a lot of effort to solve, and that is not only is it a cloud-based database where we can take data from a phone and we can store it into this cloud, but it also handles replication out to other devices and it notifies them when the data in the cloud has changed. When I first started teaching Android programming, this took a lot of effort to do because we had to have a local database on the phone, which we did in SQLite. Then we had to have, have some kind of service where we would save the data. Additionally, one other thing that Firebase does for us that used to take a lot of effort to do manually is it can handle offline synchronization. In other words, if you save data while the device is offline and then you reconnect, when you reconnect, it knows to push that data up to the cloud and potentially receive new data back down from the cloud. In the old days when we did that manually, we had to use some try-catch blocks and some exceptions. All of that no longer needed with Firebase. So that's the principal thing that we think of when we think of Firebase. But Firebase can do several other things as well. I'll point out the third term on this slide, Cloud Tools for Android Studio. As with many technologies, especially cloud-based te technologies, Firebase started as this kind of cloud-based database but they've added a lot of additional features since, including storage, hosting, authentication, and all the way down to one of my favorite things, which is uh, Crashlytics and, and Test Lab. So this is ensuring the quality of our application, either before we release it, in the case of Test Lab, or while it's released in the case of Crashlytics. In other words, one of the advantages of Android is also a disadvantage, and that is the Android operating system runs on many, many different devices in many different form factors. And so to test our application thoroughly, we have to test on a variation of these form factors. Test Labs allows us to upload an APK, or in other words, the compiled part of an Android program, and run it on several different device simulators. That's what we want to do before we launch our app. Our app. Now, after we launch our app, we like to put in Crashlytics because if the app crashes, it will give us some information around the crash and it will help us to debug that crash. Now, why are these so important? These are important today, even more important than before, because if your app lacks quality, you'll quickly see that reflected in your App Store rating. And your App Store or your Play Store rating is the most important asset that you have, the most valuable asset that you have, and it's a rating that's determined by the community. So you can influence it by having better software, but you can't directly change that number. So a couple of other uh, terms that we're going to have. I said cloud tools, and uh, I will say a, a little correction here. I should have been talking more about App Engine in that last uh, in that last little bit, but nonetheless, you get the idea. Cloud tools, App Engine. Uh, enhancements that we can add on to our Android environment. Now the other terms that we have, Firebase I, I defined at the very start of this video, and then Android Studio is our development environment for Android. So how do we set up our project? First we need to have an Android project. Secondly we may need to generate an SHA1 fingerprint, but we only really need that if we're going to do dynamic links invites and Google sign in with the device. If you just want to test things out, you can get by without this SHA1 fingerprint. Next, we need to create a new Firebase project. And so we'll start by going to a web view that we'll see in just a moment. We'll create our Firebase project. If we have the SHA1 certificate, which we're not going to have in this case, we add that. And then it gives us a configuration file called Google Services JSON that we're going to need to download and add to our project and a set of security rules uh, that will add to our Firebase database to say who we're going to allow to add and edit information in that database. So uh, we will go ahead, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and get started with that. So first, how do we get here? Uh, you can either go to firebase.com or firebase.google.com. And if you have a Google account or a Gmail account, uh, that's all you need to log in. So you see it has a nice welcome page here. I see my Google photo, so I know I'm logged in. And now I'm going to choose go to console. I'll give this just a moment to render. And now let's say add project. Uh, project name, we're going to call it plant places. And we'll call it plant places 26. Uh, country region US. 
uh, uh, you know, use your judgment here on what you're going to share and what you're going to accept and so on and so forth. Uh, okay. And I say create project. Give it just a moment. And we see it's finishing up right now. And so I go ahead and I choose continue. Now from here, it, we just basically follow the bouncing ball. Add Firebase to your Android app is what I'm going to do. So Android package name. The best way to find this is to go to our build.gradle file. And notice up here the application ID, that's our package name. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, control C that. Sometimes you're not quite sure what the package name is because it might have sub packages under it. But that application ID is the important part. App nickname, I'll call it plant places. 26. If I had an SHA1 key, I would add it right here, but I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and choose register app, and we'll let this go for just a moment. Now, uh, look, don't be tempted to skip over the screen. This screen is very important. First of all, we have to download this Google Services JSON, and we have to remember to put it under project and then app. We need to put it somewhere around this build.gradle, app IML. We just kind of have to remember a couple of things here. Now, we'll probably never have to open up and edit this file, but suffice it to say this file has the information that Firebase needs on our device. Uh, it has the information that Firebase needs to know how to connect to our specific instance of a cloud-based database. So I right-click this and I choose copy. Just make sure that the name is correct. And then I'm going to go back to Android Studio. And we remember projects Android then under the app uh, file. I sometimes find it's easier to hit project files here and then go to app. And remember, if we take a look at that, uh, just a moment here, if we take a look at the, the kind of helper here, we want to put it under our application, then the app folder. We want to have it be the neighbor of the git ignore app IML build gradle and proguard rules dot pro. Uh, so sure enough, I found the right folder. That's to me, that's the easiest way to know you're in the right place. Uh, because if you're in the, uh, if you're in the, um, modules view here. It's not quite straightforward. You think maybe you want to paste it under here. Not quite straightforward. So I right click here and I'm going to choose paste and Google services JSON. Yeah, that's good. And we want to add this guy to Git, and there we go. So looking good so far, a couple of more things that we're going to need to do. So uh, we're going to have to add a couple of things to our build Gradle file. And luckily Firebase will walk us through part of this as well. So I go back to the browser and we see add Firebase SDK. Okay, so project level build Gradle. Uh, I'm just, notice I just click on that and it copies. And so uh, just a moment. So I go back to uh, I go back to Android Studio, and there are two build Duck Gradles. And this one will go to Plant Places Mobile, and we see dependencies. And I'm going to paste, and you see under the existing class path dependencies that are already there, I've simply added one more um, dependency underneath, uh, one more dependency in this block. So that's good, we go ahead and save. Now let's go back and take a look at what's next. Okay, uh, app level build.gradle, we need to add a compile dependency. Instead of trying to highlight, just hit the little copy icon here and, and you'll get it there. So double shift and build.gradle again. This time we're looking for the one that is in app. There we go. And we want to go down to dependencies, and I see a list. Let me just maximize this so we can see it, see it in a bit higher detail. Uh, so I see a list of compiled dependencies, and I simply add my Firebase dependency there. One more that it needs us to add. This one's a bit goofy. Add this uh, apply plugin to the bottom of the file. So copy that. What's weird about that is it's just kind of in no man's land here. We just kind of paste it right there. And then save. Now this gets us the Firebase core. One more that we need to add if we want to use the database is this plugin right here, com Google uh, Firebase, Firebase Database 1601. That'll give us access to the database components of Firebase as well as everything else. One thing to be aware of when you start adding libraries is there are some dependencies between libraries. And so you see right now it's a bit upset that my play services is off. I'm not going to worry about that in this video, but just be aware that it's a good idea to keep those versions kind of compatible or similar. If you have different versions, it gets a bit upset. Now you notice towards the top of this file, it says Gradle, Gradle files have changed since the last sync. Let's go ahead and sync now. It just notices that our Gradle, which is our build recipe, has changed and so it wants to rebuild. It occasionally takes a, a few minutes, so just be aware of that. It might take a bit of time. 
Now, let's make sure that we have imported Gradle properly. I'm just going to pick an activity here, and I'm in the onCreate method, and I'm going to try to access Firebase database. And you see that it auto-completes, and so that's a good sign. So I'll go ahead and say yes, Firebase database .get instance, And then it, uh, we're going to Control-Alt-F to make a field out of this. And call that Firebase database, just like so. And I'm, I'll go through the full implementation in the next video. I just want to confirm that my application is indeed uh, building. And so far, it looks pretty good. Just to confirm, I'll do a rebuild the project here. As long as it builds and I have that Firebase database reference in there, then that indicates that we have correctly set up our build files and we have access to the Firebase libraries. Oh, well, sure. I'm glad I tried that out because I got this uh, execution failed for task, unable to merge decks. That's a bit of a cryptic message. You might not, and as a matter of fact, probably won't get this error. But just in case you do, here's how I eventually fixed it after doing quite a bit of searching around. Uh, the, something that I glazed over earlier has come back to haunt me, and that is that my play services library is a bit out of date compared to the Firebase libraries that I'm using. So I had to remove that Play Services library and I had to import specifically the library that I need in a newer version of that. So I had imported this library in a previous video for location services, went out and saw the reference that I need for the current library. Now uh, what's a bit odd to me is that you notice this list shows if you want this feature, do this import. Want this feature, do this import. Where previously, we would just grab all of the Google Play services all at once in one library. What, the reason why I find that weird is that back in old, old, old versions of Android, we used to import each library separately. And then to improve it, we only had to import this one library. Now we're back to having to import each library separately again. At least that's what I get from this documentation. Forgive me for venting for a little bit. But that's probably one of my least favorite things about uh, Android development is I feel like every time I add some library here, it has a cross dependency on another library. And that puts me into a little cycle of trying to figure out all those dependencies. And even at this point, I don't have them right because this is 16, that's 15. But for my purposes, that's close enough. So you probably won't get that error unless you have a, a Gradle file that's kind of uh, has some different versions like mine does. But in case you do, that's the approach. Just make sure that your libraries are similar. So I've done a rebuild. Everything looks good. Now, we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. In the next video, we will actually do some implementation of this in our GPS of plant. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.